So, I've held a very un- unpopular opinion for a while that uh, Drake is our generation's Tupac. And uh, before you click off, hear me out. Um, and while you're here, you know, click the subscribe button, click the like button. But I am convinced that people who find themselves in the entertainment industry, musicians, um, movie stars, etc., were the theater kids back in school. They were the eccentric personalities. They were the ones who believed that the world was their stage. And naturally, they found themselves on stages, right? Whether through music or whether through um, acting. And Drake is a great example of that. But I think this is the same for most entertainers, right? Unfortunately, I think in our community, we have been convinced to take these individuals serious without really considering the fact that what they do, their job is theater. Their job is to embody a certain type of character and make that embodiment as convincing as possible, right? So why do I make the Drake and Tupac comparison? Tupac was born on the East Coast. He went to theater school. Um, If you look at early interviews of Tupac, he was, by all indications, a sweetheart. But over time, he started playing the character of the thug. He moved to the West Coast, became uh, affiliated with a certain lifestyle, and convinced us and has convinced the rest of the world that that's who he is and that's what he comes from. And even pioneered an East Coast, West Coast beef representing the West Coast, even though he was born and raised on the East Coast. But unfortunately, like I said, our community in particular took it seriously. And, you know, I say sometimes that, you know, when... Uh, people live in scarcity, they escape to fantasy, right? Um, For men, that tends to be video games in the modern day. For women, that tends to be novels, movies, etc. And unfortunately, a lot of our community is in scarcity. So music, movies, theater, and now with reality shows, uh, theater that's indistinguishable from real life, is our escape. And unfortunately, it's to the point now that it's not art imitating life, it's life imitating art. Now, in the case of Drake, obviously, you know, child actor, teenage actor, um, not from that life, not about that life, but has realized that that portrayal is lucrative and has started making that type of music. Now, Drake is making drill music. Um, Now, I don't say that necessarily to say that Drake lost the beef, which I I think he did personally, right? I think Kendrick, um, Kendrick's accusing him of being phony, being... um, essentially an opportunist who's wearing street culture as a costume. Uh, I think that was it, right? However, uh, I think Kendrick, in a way, is guilty of that as well. Um, Kendrick being a little bit more authentic than Drake because he comes from some of that, even though he was sheltered from it by his family. But, like, my big message here is, like, we have to stop being so preoccupied with nonsense and particularly theatrical nonsense right and the unfortunate thing about it is i wouldn't be surprised if this whole beef or previous beefs have been manufactured because like i've said even on youtube um controversy sells if it bleeds it leads right people don't want peace they want problems always 
So with rappers being students of the proverbial game, being students of the industry and understanding that, hey, you know, the most attention that I'm going to get is during controversy. I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they got to the point where they started cooking up controversy. Right. Like we hear about even female rappers, for instance, like Meg Thee Stallion, um, Cardi B. Whenever they do music that is outside of their character, music that's more conscious, more lyrical, etc., that doesn't sell. And we wonder why they continue to make degenerate music. But I think as consumers, we don't take enough cre- uh, enough responsibility for our demand and how that fuels the supply, right? And I think the same goes for rappers. You know, somebody like the baby, for instance in my opinion, is only famous because he supposedly shot somebody at Walmart and he beat somebody up at the mall. Like, we like bullshit. And because of that, we're not celebrating quality. We're not celebrating skill. We're not celebrating uh, attention to detail. And I think we're actually going to see more beefs. I know... um, uh, Chris Brown and Quavo is supposedly beefing at some point. But I think the reason we're going to see more beefs because, number one, as you guys can see, like, the shit is lucrative. I think two of Kendrick's responses are number one on the Billboard charts, and then Drake's are, like, uh, 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 you know, right behind it. But the other thing, too, is, like, I think hip-hop is becoming a lost and a dying art. I I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine and he said that, you know, um, Afro beats is on its way up. K-pop is on its way up and and hip hop is trying to it's trying to hold on and hang on. And unfortunately, one of the ways that it's doing that is by instigating or um, sustaining, you know, the the competitive aspect of that genre of music which you know we've always known is unsustainable I'm just I think it's unfortunate that we have such a bloodlust as a consumer base that we champion this gladiatorial the the gladiatorial aspect of of hip hop And, you know, even people were were talking shit about J. Cole for, you know, bowing out. But it's like, maybe he saw the bigger picture. Maybe he saw the bigger picture of like, yo, this shit is not worth it. And this is not what I want this art form to be celebrated for or what I want myself to be celebrated for. But again, the man dictates supply. You know, so I think, you know. I think that's what we need to start thinking about. The real world consequences of our bloodlust. The real world consequences of our demand. Like we talk about women being the ones propping up a lot of these female rappers. But statistically speaking, it's actually men. And we're not willing to have that conversation. You know, even people like Sexy Red. She said, you know, she was looking at her analytics. And she mispronounced analytics. And... A lot of her fan base is men. Probably fatherless men, but men nonetheless. And on this side, on the male side, a lot of times we feel beef and we feel, uh, uh, you know, battle raps and all that kind of stuff, which is like, if you understand the art, it's cool. But like on the surface, we can no longer sustain our culture, our community based on negativity. And we should be able to see the like the, the direct link of where that comes from. But like a lot of the things we celebrate, like joning and, and things like that, a lot of things we celebrate in our culture are counterproductive. And we we brand it as character building or we brand it as this is a way we have uh, uh, maintained our resilience. But like at what point do we move past resilience? 
and we start thinking of like, okay, what are the consequences of generations after us if we continue to normalize joking about how people look? If we continue to normalize, oh, you got haters, your haters are your motivators, all that negative uh, um, glass half empty thinking that we've normalized. Now you got kids in middle school and high school and they, 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 they're looking at the world as if it's, it's this place full of people who are out to get them. And in some ways, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a productive paradigm, but as a community in particular, we have to stop championing this stuff. So, you know, I think this is bigger than Kendrick versus J. Cole. I think, number one, we need to do a better job gatekeeping our culture, right? I think, number two, we need to do a better job defining our culture by productive things, as opposed to being black enough means being gangster or it means being thug or it means uh, uh, using improper grammar. Being black means being being excellent. It means being uh, attentive, being being strategic. And then lastly, we got to stop feeding the shit that, that, that we claim we don't care about or the shit that we claim that's bad for us. And we talk about women doing it a lot with these female rappers and stuff like that. But we do it too. Men, we do it too. So those are my two cents. Um, Comment below. Subscribe. Like. Don't like it. I don't know. Y'all be good.